And from me, Alan Biggs, a warm welcome as ever to Thursday's Talking Sheffield here at Sheffield Live TV. I'm delighted to say tonight we have one of our finest footballers and we have one of our finest journalists as well. The footballer is back here by popular demand because enough of you said we want more of Terry Curran. So hello again, Terry. Good of you to join us only about a month or so after you were last with us. And do you know what? People were saying you didn't ask him for enough of his stories of Big Jack. So I promise you that in the second half of tonight's show, you'll hear a lot of those. And some of them are really worth hearing, I can tell you. And Les Payne. Uh, out of retirement from the Sheffield Star, but you never ever retire from being a sporting sage. Uh, Les, it's good to have you. I know that you still keep in touch with the local scene. Uh, for many, many years, uh, Sheffield Star's uh, Rotherham man, but you, really you were a man for all seasons and all clubs, weren't you? Really? I like to think so, yeah. I got around and watched everybody, Alan, yeah. You're, you're, you're well known to followers of the Blades and the Owls because you did many a relief turn, didn't you? Uh, whenever the guys were, were off yeah. uh, and, and, and you, you got involved there, you got yourself in a few scrapes when yeah. you attempted to write about, you know, the difference between Wednesday fans and Blades fans, didn't you? I did. I got probably more calls and letters and emails about that particular subject when I, I sort of... Um, uh, said what I thought about the particular merits of each set of fans than anything else I think I ever wrote. And, and, and actually, just briefly, uh, how did you sort of break them down? Because I, I, you, you, had, you had a kind of glass half full, glass half empty yeah, yeah, thing. I, Who was the yeah, half full? I had, um, I had uh, Wednesday as half full. Right. I think I said something like, um, Wednesday always seemed to look on the optimistic side. If they were growing cabbages at Hillsborough, they'd be the finest cabbages in Europe. <laughs> Whereas United tended to be a little bit more on the pessimistic side. If they were second in the league, as they were under Neil Warnock, they thought that they might not make it and get in the playoffs and then lose the playoffs. Yeah. There would be a tendency that, you know... And you had a bit of a reaction to that? Uh, a bit. I think that's a slight um, <laughs> understatement. Um, I got a heck of a reaction. But yeah. a lot of favourable stuff from the Blades, including Neil Warnock, who did a piece in his newspaper column about it, and he yeah. thought it was spot on. So, <laughs> there you are. Oh, am I to argue with the... You can't please everybody all the time. The, the newspaper and your bosses would have been delighted because it got a big reaction. What do you think, uh, Terry, about Because you played for... Well, we whisper it that you've played for both Sheffield clubs. You're not so keen on one of them, I know that. But what Les has said there about the difference between the two sets of supporters, do you agree with him? Well, at the end of the day, when, when a reporter's uh, working with both sets of uh, clubs, he, he will analyse what reaction he gets, what the reaction uh, they get from the, each club. Uh, so I'm, who am I to argue with Les? He, uh, he's looked at it, he's viewed it, and he's thought that the best way, uh, what he was thinking. And so I will go with that. But Sheffield Wednesday are the best. And we do think that we, <laughs> if we, we are growing cabbages, they are the finest cabbages, not, not in Yorkshire, but in Europe. <laughs> well, there is, I've got to say, having covered both teams for, for many, many years, that I agree there's, there's a lot in what, what Les says. There's always an optimism at Hillsborough. There you were in the third tier, you know, third division, as it was in old money in your, in your days. And there was always that optimism around the place, wasn't there, despite that? Yeah. It, it, it's a massive club. I mean, I support the Sheffield Wednesday. You just used a word there. <laughs> not, not knowingly, massive. But it you? is. It, I mean, <laughs> I, when I come and join to Sheffield Wednesday... I was a big supporter from a young kid watching the, in the FA Cup in 66, 67, whatever it was. Um, and for me to go and play, come out first division to go and play at Sheffield Wednesday, I had a lot of stick myself from professional footballers. Even my, my dad at the time said, you know, why are you dropping down? But I wanted to join Sheffield Wednesday. I was at the right age at 23 to help him. Uh, and when I went to Everton, I remember Peter Eats saying to me about the club. And I said, it's a, it is a big, massive club in, 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 with, with fans-wise. Uh, I know it's not won the trophies like, you know, your Everton's and your Man United's and your Arsenal's, but that's never had, it's never had a backing. It's never had a really backing with the, the money-wise, uh, money people. If it ever gets that, it will be, it'll be as big as Chelsea. Yeah, it, well, it, it, it may have that now. I hope so. Uh, I, we don't know. We, we've got to wait and see. Uh, uh, until we see it happen... Eight signings now, including Lewis McGregor. I know that no, none of them are mega signings, 
but considerable amount has been spent, including at one and a half million pounds on one of those players, a Portuguese midfielder, and that's not to be sniffed at on on recent uh, buying levels at Hillsborough, is it? Leslie? Absolutely not. Um, one would assume that uh, the incoming manager would know the Portuguese players. There's no two ways about that, yeah. and he feels that they can make a real impact in the championship. And um, one and a half million, what is that in today's championship prices? It's not a fantastic amount, but, but when was that on Wednesday? Absolutely. They haven't for, for, for yeah. many years. I think yeah. somebody said that Chef Kikuchi was the last million pound player. That's going back, what, early 2000s? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Terry Orth may have been the, the, the striker there. Yeah. I've got to ask you, though, there's two sides to this money coin at Wednesday at the moment. What they're spending and what they're trying to create a, a better team uh, some would say it's only natural then, they're trying to bring more income through the gate, but the ticket prices, you've seen the match day prices announced, they've caused shockwaves, really, and there's been a lot of condemnation, you can understand why. Yeah. Uh, well, just to summarise, you could be paying, depending on where you are in the ground and what category of game it is, you could be paying £50 plus for an adult ticket next season to turn up on match day. What do you think of that, Terry? Well, there's two sides to that story, Alan. The, the one that we're, I can see what he's trying to do is trying to get people to buy season tickets and then it becomes cheaper. But there is people can't afford to pay three, four, five, six hundred uh, pounds uh, for a season ticket. So uh, the poorer end of the sp uh, spectators uh, are, still will find it difficult. So it's a, it's a catch-22, you know, uh, damned if I do, damned if I don't. But I can see where he's coming from. But if it, for £12, 12 pound or £50, uh, 50 pound for some tickets in some mm. areas of the ground, it is expensive for some spectators. I mean, you missed the wave of the big money in, in, in football. Would you pay £50 pounds to go and see a football match? Yes, I would. It, 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 majority of football fans uh, are ardent spectators. Mm. You know, you'll get a nag or at uh, every football ground in the country and they will go whether they win, lose or draw. Then when you're successful, you get the other ones what flow in and, 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 and fill the ground up. People so, will miss holidays and things like that. Yes. Won't so they? in general, yes, I would. Uh, Which doesn't uh, make it people, right. But, no, it doesn't make it right. But you ask me if I would. Yes, I would. But at the end of the day, there'd be some people what wouldn't. And what you've you? got to try and get it right for, for both both sets of spectators. OK, I mean, we're costed, privileged, pampered people who get a free seat, Les, you know, we have done for years. Absolutely. So, from that point of view, our, our views aren't re really very valid compared with the views of, of, of supporters. And I think we, we're fair to say we lose touch with what is actually being what, charged. How many times do you go to a game you just don't know, do you? No, absolutely. 100% correct, Alan. I've always said that directors and managers and players don't pay. Journalists don't pay, mm. so you do get out of touch with what people have yeah. to pay at a football match. It's slightly opened my eyes a little bit in the last year, and I've been retired, when I've gone and paid at football matches, how to get a ticket, what it costs. Mm. Could I afford to go if I was uh, with a family twice a week, Saturday, Tuesday? Uh, and in my experience, one final thing to you, in my experience, few things cause greater anger amongst supporters than increased ticket prices. Sure. Be it bump them up for the cup game or as when you've done now you know hike them up and that really really upsets fans great points les and on top of that you know you, if you're taking a family sausage uh, yeah. hot dogs uh, sausage rolls everything what goes in there chips whatever they have drinks shirts all gone up so the merchandise side of it yeah. it becomes very expensive yeah. for a family and Absolutely. you know the travel as well. Yeah, you, uh, you go on. You go on the continent. I mean, Bayern Munich is one of the cheapest uh, prices for to watch a football match throughout the world. Yeah. And you know, and uh, massive club is is, is yeah. Bayern Munich. Yeah. Well, I think Wednesday's levels there for match day. And uh, okay, the club would say, well, they haven't actually said, they haven't actually explained it, which is another bone of contention. They haven't actually just put it out there, but haven't actually tried to justify it, which as a valid criticism. You know, the, I think Danny Hall in the Sheffield Star has written a very good piece about that, which is online at the moment, if anybody wants to see it. And it, it's, it's a valid criticism. The supporters do expect an explanation. Mm -hmm. But the club, I think, would say, uh, OK, there's been opportunities with the early bird deals or whatever, season ticket sales. Uh, th th it's not £50 or £45 for every game. It's just for the, the top category. Yeah. But even so, that would appear to be in line with Premier League prices. It absolutely is. Now, what may happen is Terry said, Terry's happy to pay at Wednesday, fine, and I don't doubt quite a few are. Yeah. A lot won't, 
and the lot can't afford it. But, you know, if Wednesday do get to the top of the table, and the yeah. Tuesday night they're playing Middlesbrough or a third, are we going to Hillsborough? And it's a category A and it might be 48 quid. Somebody, they do desperately want to go yeah. and they just might find that money, might be able to find that yeah. money from somewhere. If yeah. they win, they might want to go again. If they lose, and they might not. What about you? Would you pay 50 quid to watch a football match? <sighs> Um, depends what sort of game it is. And I like yeah, yeah, yours. absolutely. Um, the only thing is this: very often, when a team gets to a playoff final, yeah. or semi-final, or a cup final, the first tickets to go tend to be the more expensive ones. So people will stump up. Would I pay fifty quid? Probably would if I desperately wanted to go to the game. But it would have to have something more at stake than just a league game in November where yes. you were looking to be in yes. the top six or something. But yeah. guys, ardent supporters will pay it. It's wrong what's, what, what's happening. Yeah. I agree it's all wrong. You, the, your question you ask, would you pay it? There will be some people will pay it. There will be some people won't pay it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah. that's... We've got to try and get the balance where to get these people be able to afford to come in. There's got to be cheaper yeah. prices for certain people to get into the ground yeah. because you better drop the ground full than half empty. Yeah. Well, the owners now being on Sheffield Wednesday and, uh, and to balance this out, having met Dapon Chansiri briefly and having seen and kept in touch round the fringes with what's going on, I seriously think this guy means business. I think you're starting to see that. I don't believe that there is a budget. I think he's simply saying if that player's available and that's the, the, the a fee that's worthwhile, I'll pay it. Yeah. And so the onus is on him to produce a team that people will want to pay 50 quid, 40 quid to, to, to actually see, isn't it? Yeah, that, that pressure's on them now to get the results to justify, in a way, that yeah. sort of pricing, you know. It'll only be justified if they're successful. Yes. If you're winning, yeah. then it'll all be forgotten. Come. But yeah. if it's not, if we're not, then that's when the fans will have a really go. Yeah. You know, so. uh, uh, yeah. And the big thing, Terry... Uh, but I will sign... say this on his behalf, Sorry, yeah. the, the, the new uh, pitch down, new scoreboard, so you can see a little bit of improvement, which is, hasn't been done for a few years. Mm -hmm. So I can see where they, you know, they are trying to make the club a little bit more viable to the fans, and, and so look, we are trying to push it now. So let's, let's hope it's, it's in the right direction. Well, they've signed, so far they've signed defenders, they've signed midfield players, and they've signed eight players in total, uh, Lewis McGugan being the latest. But conspicuously, and this was a point you made a few weeks ago, no strikers yet. And that's where the big money is to be spent, I think. Or... It, it has to be. You have to have, if, to get promotion or to win any mortal thing, to win a World Cup, to win a, a Premier League title, you've got to have a 20-plus striker. Yeah. Else you will never win a football match. Mm. We'll see who it is. I mean, Jordan Rhodes is still being gossiped about round the edges. You couldn't completely dismiss it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be unlikely they'd go to that extent for one player. Although it has been put to me uh, that he might go to £10 million for a couple of strikers, you know, like or get one on loan, maybe Bamford from Chelsea. That's pretty ambitious, that. Be a good signing, Bamford, I think. Yeah. He will get goals. Jordan Rhodes would guarantee you goals. He didn't get Blackman anywhere near the playoffs last season, of course, even though he scored lots yeah. of goals. Yeah. But I think that probably... You just said, Alan, and I wasn't aware of that, that just tells you what the ambition that they've got and they really do they're not just talking about no. pushing on they they intend pushing on so. and if they're getting the Bamfords in or others spending big money the main business the plus side to it is a friend of Jose Mourinho's yes and yeah. I guess <laughs> the guy at Middlesbrough is the same as yeah. it will help being a friend of him to get one of these ex uh, Experienced players or a young player, what looks as though he's going to be uh, a top player. Bamford, to of course. Through. Yes. Yeah, Marino will know who he's coming to, yes. what sort of coaching, and what sort of how he's going to get looked after. And that would. Uh, where you did Bamford go last season? Karanka at Middlesbrough, who worked with Mourinho. Significant that. Yeah. Except there's been some interest from Norwich, and will Chelsea and Mourinho think, well, he's done the business in the Championship for the next stage of his development. <coughs> Norwich aren't our rivals. Send him to Norwich. He's not going to do us any harm there, and it might do us some... Yeah. Well, you may do. Rotherham United, every time I look at Twitter, Rotherham have signed another player. How he's many have they got? Ten, he's, he's only signed ten, though. That's a bit, I think it's a bit down on last season. <laughs> but t give Steve time. I think he'll have uh, a chance to come up with one or two more before the before the season starts. They're still wanting a striker, I think, aren't and, they? And when you enter um, the Les Payne press room next <laughs> season, what do you expect from Rotherham United? Um, not dissimilar to last season. I think they survived, and that what 
you know, that's what it was all about last season. Um, you talk about consolidation in the second season, and sometimes we have second season syndrome, don't we? I do, yeah. Um, I think if they can sort of get away a little bit from the relegation, probably, I think that would be um, as much as you could expect. But one thing I will say is they signed some players with championship experience, haven't they? Mm. Last season they went in with quite a few from League Two and yeah. League One. You'll, you'll know more about it than, than I will, Les. Uh, what's the first 12 games like? You know, if there's the top teams and they don't get many, po don't get yeah. many points, that becomes yeah. difficult for little teams like Rotherham. Yeah. If they've got winnable games and they get to a good start, then, and I think, well, yeah. I don't think, I, I know the manager himself, he... Yeah. Uh, He's a strong character he's a and, and, and he's a winner. He is a winner. And, you know, and like all successful managers, he's got that discipline about him and he do will make sure that... It, do you know him well? It, no, no, when I say no. I know him, and throughout yeah. his career with his successful his teams, with his promotion, yeah. you know, he's a, you can see he's a winger, you can see he's a strong man and you can see he's a, a good character that he won't stand nonsense from, no. from players. He's, yeah. a, he's got a lot of detractors, shall we say, but his record's there to be... <laughs> Admired. He has, you're right, Alan. He has yeah. got his detractors. Um, and then you look at his record. I said to Terry earlier, got four promotions, two with Crawley, two with Rotherham, and a survival in the Championship. Yeah. That's some record. This is indeed. You know, yeah. for yeah. whatever. But and, and on top of that, when he was at Boston, he, he was successful at Boston. Yeah. Yeah. You know, whatever he's been, he's been successful. That's right, And you've got to get detractors. When, when you've got something to say mm. and you've got that little bit of edge about you, you you're going to have people that like you and people that don't uh, yeah. dislike you. So but he, he has to put up with that like everybody else does. Yeah, absolutely. If you're feeling left out, Blades fans, you did have Chris Morgan in here last week. Um, and uh, we will talk about Blades in the second half. I might throw Billy Sharp at Les and see what he thinks the prospects of... Uh, United signing Billy Sharp. Yorkshire cricket, we've not mentioned Yorkshire cricket. Les is very well qualified to talk about that. Doing great, aren't they? Absolutely brilliant. Considering the players that uh, they've got at test level as well. I think that the championship, the title's nailed on. Um, the defeat for Durham the other day kept them pegged back. Um, they've got games in hand of the teams below them. Points ahead, what, 20 on points? I think, and the way that they're playing under Gillespie, everybody's at the job. I think that the, the title's nailed on. I Massive do. resurgence in Yorkshire cricket. Oh, brilliant. These last all time. levels, yeah. seconds and the age group, um, they all... Could you see it coming? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. What was it? Was it getting Gillespie in? Happy Gillespie, Martin Moxon done a great job. But they've, they've just running it through the whole club now. You know, I, I happened to see the seconds last summer and they were like well drilled, just like the first team. Yeah. And I understand the age group teams, even down to your under 13s and under 11s, they've got that professionalism about them, you know. Jeffrey Boycott doing a good job as president? <laughs> Dickie, now Dickie as president. Oh, Dickie, Jeffrey sorry. did a great job as president, did, yeah. yeah. yeah but and Dickie still, will tell you that he's doing a wonderful. Yeah, I still consider him he's there, so yeah. he takes a bit of credit. Yeah, yeah, when yeah, you're going yeah. you yeah. about cricket guys, uh, when, obviously throughout my sporting career, when I was watching all the sports. When your when the test when the England's had Yorkshire players in it, they've always been successful mm. with Freddie Truman, boycotts of this world. Mm. And now they've got a few more coming through and it, yeah. you know they started mm. to pick back up again. Brian so, Close, Phil Sharp. Yeah, yeah. All these players. Yeah. The, 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 amazing amazing thing, the amazing thing is yeah. that they've got these players in the uh, England team. And then the top three in the Yorkshire order are all young, inexperienced lads. Alex Lees had a couple of seasons under his belt. Will Rhodes' first season. Jack Leaning, who was the son of Andy Leaning, the former Sheffield United goalkeeper, Is that right? yeah, that. At, uh, played at York in his first season. And they're the one, two, three, and we're top of the table. So that tells you that they Fantastic. really mean business. Long may it continue. It's been a hard day at the office for England, though, in the test at Lords. Oof. Goodness me. Over 300 for one, I think, yeah. Aus Australia, on an absolute shirt front of a wicket. Uh, I think you and I could have batted on it, apparently. <laughs> not so sure. I'm not so sure. Maybe we could. And Terry, in the second half, I'll ask you. There was a, an interview I did with Big Jack Charlton once, and I asked him, a, him about you. And he said, problem with Terry is, every time he opens his mouth, his brains fall out. Do you remember that? <laughs> Not really, Alan, but you must have done. It was. It was there on tape. I put it out. I got into trouble, actually, for putting it out. John Harris, the chief scout, rang me up and said, oh, you shouldn't have put that out, son. I said, well, Jack's big enough and ugly enough to look after himself. More from Terry, uh, Les Payne. Uh, James Gregg will join us with a roundup in the second half in five minutes. We'll see you then. Don't go away. <laughs> <laughs>